Hello to everybody. And I'm sorry that I couldn't physically attend your meeting, but I hope that I can convey the message and my conviction and commitment to the subject itself via this uh, video message. Because um, the accessibility is just on the core of equality and non-discrimination. And the accessibility is not only the stairs or streets or the physical accessibility of places. It is the accessibility of the services and goods that we people use both privately and publicly in the markets. Accessibility is more and more about the digital services and then you look different kind of an accessibility. The accessibility via cognitive means, via seeing, hearing, touching or moving and age also. And quite often, as we know, these different points of accessibility do go line in line. So when we are talking about accessible reading or accessible libraries, we should be talking about a multiple system, how they are accessible physically, how intuitive they are, what kind of a voice guidance they do have, what kind of a materials and accesses for digital services they do have, and what kind of digital libraries that are accessible for those people that have vision impairment are we creating and can we create. So in my opinion, the accessibility is part of this non-discrimination and I think that uh, it's a great disadvantage that the EU hasn't yet been able to pass through the uh, non-discrimination directive. But yes, we have the Accessibility Act. And yes, we do have the understanding that equality is not only preventing something, it is creating enabling environments for everybody. Then, in a nutshell, the question is that could we in European libraries create that kind of a joint roadmap or understanding what the accessibility for uh, vision impairment and other people do mean? Of course, it means Braille. It means that we do have books with Braille that are readable for those people who can't see. But it means books that are accessible via touching in other ways also. And this is especially important for children, where you can actually, by touching and understanding, understand the story. And indeed, the old frames of sculptures in churches or public places served as, as somewhat this kind of an idea of accessible, touchable, understandable world. How do you explain, for example, <clears throat> for people in general and uh, for people with vision impairments, what is the world, the globe's history of four billion or five billion years? What happened and when? And when did the human beings enter to the planet? And when did we actually uh, run into the, uh, into the climate crisis? But if you walk and touch the places and if you hear the explanations, you actually grasp the scale better. How long is the history? How short time has the human being been in the planet? And how flash of a second actually our actions to cause the climate change are that matter. So you can use different kind of a methods. Not only what is the type of the books. Then of course it is the e-books. How do you get a uh, proper library of e-books for all different kind of uh, user groups? 
and how do you re uh, create the lendability of the e-books uh, uh, for vis vision impairment people? And bearing in mind that the people are different ages and uh, stages and preferences, so uh, the good access accessibility means that the interface of the product needs to be very variable. It could be the uh, television set on command program. It could be actually CD, DVD. It could be online content on the phone or on the iPad or whatever. Because if we only think that okay, accessibility is an e-book on certain format, on certain interface, you're actually excluding quite big part of uh, uh, the audience because for people in different stages and uh, different disabilities, the learning of uh, the machines, the interfaces, could be very different than it is for us. So there needs to be a vast variety of different forms of e-books and the lending capacity of the e-books. Then actually the question is, how do we move the libraries in two directions. The one direction actually is the e-books and digital library. So what is the library for a blind person that is carried on with your mobile phone or your tablet or your computer? How you create your services there, e-books, e-news, and varied different kind of uh, services. And actually, not only the voice services, reading services, are creating that, uh, uh, that service. Then, that matter, it means that we would need to create a source of a different kind of a library, not only online, but also in physical libraries. The libraries have been, and they are for a long time being, these kind of a places to meet and greet and to learn new things. How do we create libraries that actually enhance the accessibility, enhance the learning services of different kind of interfaces, different kind of e-books, or different kind of, kind of translation services, or learning new languages? So, uh, accessibility and vision impairment people is a wonderful challenging combination. This is something that really is and hopefully will spur our innovation and our enlightenment of new ways, quite literally, on seeing things, grasping and understanding things, sharing things, and getting the services for everybody. And bearing in mind that quite often these good services are not only services for people with disabilities, they are easier services for everybody. For elderly, with people with cognitive disimpairment, and with people with other challenges in their lives. So creating accessible serviceable environments is a good environment for everybody. And yes, now we need to just to take the challenge and create it concretely.